Hello learners, welcome to Sigma Tech Consult Limited Learning Hub. Today we're looking at overview of computer system. In the course of this lesson, we'll talk about the concept of computer system, computer as a system, we'll highlight the components of computer system, and highlight the characteristics of the features of computer as a tool for data processing. Now let's look at a, a brief introduction of what the overview of a computer system is. We know that processing of data is not a new concept. It is the integral part of the human workflow as such is experienced in our daily life. The only thing that changes and or is modified is the means of data processing. And in recent times, processing of data has moved from manual or mechanical means to electronic or automatic. This gives rise to the advancement in the ways data is converted into information. So in this lesson, we'll look at the overview of computer system, especially as a tool for electronic data processing. So by definition of concept, what is a system? In literal terms, a system is a group of integrated components which are dedicated to a common function. If we simply put it, a system is a group of related components working together in order to perform a function. So that brings us to the definition of what a computer system is. But first, we'll look at the definition of a computer system as a component of hardware or software, or even both, especially when they are dedicated to the common purpose of electronic or automatic data processing. Now, by definition of a computer, we know that a computer is an electronic device. But here, we'll try to define computer specifically to embody the components that make up a computer system. So we look at the definition of a computer system as an electronic machine or device which under the control of stored or installed programs has the ability to accept data as inputs, store the data, process the data, and bring out information, also known as output, and all these is as instructed by the user. So we know that the computer performs three major basic functions, which is the input, the process, and output. But if you look at the, the image we have on the screen, you will see that we have four basic instruction or functions of a computer system and then we added storage because storage in computer is an integral function of the computer you don't need to tell the computer to store information once any data enters the computer automatically it is stored because the computer is envisaging on the fact that you will need to reprocess this data and you don't need to impute over and over again so the computer now performs four basic function which is input processing output and storage. So input on the process or the function of a computer is the entering of data to computer through the input units. And this data, by definition, we know that data are raw facts that are yet to be processed or to give a meaning. So these inputs or this data that is imputed into the computer is done through the input devices, such as keyboard, the mouse, or any other input device that you can reference. And then the processing is the actual work of converting the data which you have entered to the information which is the process or which is the essence of data processing. And output is the result gotten from the converted or from the processed data. And at the end of all this, the data or the information which has been processed or generated is stored for future references or for future use by the computer or by the data processor. Now, we look at the constituents or the components of a computer system. Now, agreeing or we have established that the computer is a system, it means that as a system, it is an integral component of different computing devices, which means that the computer system cannot function on its own as a single unit. There are several components that make up this computer system. So here we look at the components or the constituents of a computer system. So what are the constituents or the typical of a typical computer system? First, we have the computer hardware, the computer software, and the people were component. We look at those things 
one after the other in the course of this learning. First, we look at the computer hardware. The term hardware refers to the physical component of the computer system. They are the physical and tangible parts of a computer, the things that you can feel, the things that you can see, the things that you can handle when it has to do with computer. They are majorly referred to as devices because they are majorly machines. So these are described as hardware because they are physical and tangible and in computer system the hardware categories are categorized into two we have the system unit and the peripherals first let's talk about the system unit the system unit as we all know or we must have seen is the rectangular casing which major function is to house the several important components that control the operation of the computer system, such as the motherboard, the CPU or the processor, the RAM, the sound card, the video card, the CD drive, and any other internal component that cannot be seen externally in the computer environment, but they are housed inside the system unit. And these other parts of this computer that are not housed inside the system unit are referred to as computer peripherals. So we look at the peripherals as the devices that are connected to the system unit for the purpose of input, output, and storage operations. And examples of these peripheral devices are the keyboard, the mouse, the monitor, the printer, the scanner, the DVD, your USB flash drive, and all the rest of them. So any device that is not housed by the system unit that is connected outside the system unit for operation is referred to as a peripheral device. Now we come to the second component of the computer system. Remember we said that the computer system has three major categories or three major components. The hardware, we have looked at the hardware as the physical tangible components of the computer. Now we look at the software. Now software, if we try to contrast between the hardware and software in the aspect of tangibility, you might not see the software as much handy as the hardware are. But the software on its own is a set of of programs or a collection of programs that can run on a computer system. And by definition, we say that a program is a set of instructions that tells the computer what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. So this software are the major framework of the computer system. They are the ones or they are the component of the computer that decides how the computer runs, when the computer runs, and how exactly the user make use of the computer. And so this computer software is broadly divided into two. And we look at these two components or these two categories of the computer software in the course of this learning. The first one is the system software. And the second category of the software is application software. First, let's look at the system software. This is the type of the computer program that is designed to run a computer's hardware and application programs. We call them system software because they are embodied inside the system. They are integral parts of your computer. They come with the system and they are programs or softwares that you cannot easily do away with because they are supposed to run your computer hardware and your application program. And examples of this system software are the operating system, which is the bedrock of every computer or every computing unit, and then your device drivers. The next example of system software is your utility software. In our next class, or if we, in the course of this learning, we might expand on these components or these categories of system software. But let's look at the second category of the software, the application software. The application software are, are the types of software that enable the user to perform specific operations or tasks on a computer. They are called application software because you put them to use as a user. Say you want to type a document, you need an application software that will enable you to create that task. You want to process a file, you need a word processor that will enable you to do that. And because you put this software to use when you need them, they are called application software. Okay, we look at the characteristics or features of a computer which makes it a tool for data processing. The first one is speed. Computer performs data 
processing operations in a very high speed, so which is one of the reasons people resort to computer as a tool for data processing because we want our data processed as fast as possible. So when you want to perform an operation that you feel is complex, but you need it at a very short period of time, you look at the computer as a tool for data processing. You wouldn't want to do or perform that data manually or mechanically, so we resort to the computer as a tool for data processing. The next is accuracy. Computer gives accurate result as long as the data imputed is correct. So when people want to process data and they have need for accuracy, you don't want to make mistakes, you don't want your data processing operation to embody error, we resort to the computer as a tool for data processing because it gives you accurate result. The next is versatility. You say that a device or a machine is versatile if it is able to do several things or perform several operations at one time or the other. So because the computer can be used in several facets of life, you can use it in the data processing, in offices, in your work environment, any kind of work that you want the computer to do for you, the computer can do, then we say that the computer is a versatile machine. The next is reliability or durability. The computer doesn't get tired or doesn't need to be reminded to do something just like human beings. The computer is a reliable machine. When you want to process data and you want your data processed at the time you want it without any form of human intervention, then the computer is a tool for data processing because it's reliable. And some of the times we say that this is automation because it's not like a human being that will be doing something and ask you, do you want me to continue? Once the computer is engaged in data processing activity, it sees it through because it's a reliable machine. Then the next feature of the computer as a tool for data processing is memory and storage. Because the computer embodies the, the function or the ability to store your data and keep it over a long period of time, if, no matter the amount of data processed or the amount of information stored, the computer is going to keep this information as long as you require them, except this data or information are deleted from the computer. So because of that, people resort to the computer when they want to process data so that you don't have to go through the process of imputing the data over and over again. The next feature is programmable. The computer is a programmable machine, meaning that you can control or make the computer as flexible as you want. You can program the computer to do one task today, the next tomorrow, and for whatever purpose you require from the computer, as long as the programs are installed, the computer will perform those operations as and when required. Now, we, before we conclude this class, let's take a quick look at the exam guide for further tasks and see some of the things we have there. Now we're going to take a lesson from the computer studies for the year 2017, and then we select a topic that is uh, related to the topic we have done today. So we are going to remove this option here for all topics and select some topics that has to do with the overview of a computer system. And some of the topics will be the computer software. We talked about computer software in the course of our learning. Okay, we also select operating system. Let's look at these topics and see the question, some of the questions that you might likely encounter in the course of this topic. We have the question one here. A set of programs, routines, and procedures that are used to operate the computer hardware is called, of course, if you are faced with this kind of question, you have four options to choose from. And from this question, the correct option is software, because it's the software that, that enables us to put the computer hardware to use. We'll look at the next question. Which of the file format is supported in all Windows operating system? or the file format that is supported in all Windows operating system is the FAT file operation. File fa FAT file operation is an acronym for file allocation table, and it's supported in all operating systems. And we'll look at the next question. To hibernate Windows operating system means we have 
some few options here. The first one is to restart the computer in safe mode, to restart the computer in hibernate mode, to shut down the computer and terminate all the running application, to shut down the computer without closing all the running application. So to hibernate the computer means to shut down the computer without closing all the running applications. So these are some of the questions that you might encounter that are related to the topic we treated today. Thank you for being part of this class. See you next time in our class till then. Keep using the exam guide learning app. Thank you very much.